walked through the school with the principal as he told me he had something in here to talk to me about. Um, and so right away I started to think, uh oh, what, what happened? Are my boys are my boys are okay? Did my kids do something? I wasn't really too sure right away. Uh, and then he, uh, we got right to his door, the break to his office door, and he opened up the door, and there were three officers there. Uh, my kids were in the room, so I was right away sort of shocked about that. Um, and then right away the first thing the officer said is Jesse being placed under arrest for possession of a firearm. Possession of a firearm because his four-year-old daughter had drawn it in kindergarten. So they arrested Jesse Sansone. Joining me now from Ottawa is Solomon Friedman, who is now Jesse Sansone's lawyer. Welcome back to the show, Solomon. Well, thank you very much for having me, Ezra. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you back. When we talked on Friday about this outrageous case, we had just learned about Jesse Sansone, and I asked you in a hypothetical way, how would you fight back? Well, it's not hypothetical anymore because am I correct to say that Jesse Sansone has retained you as his lawyer? That's correct, Ezra. And at this point, you know, the, the legal options that we talked about in the hypothetical are being considered here in light of the facts as they emerge. Well, now that's the first thing. People, when they have to get a lawyer, when they're involved with the police, normally the lawyer is to help them play defense. Of course, there was no gun in the house, just a toy gun and a crayon drawing of a gun. There was no crime at all. So, Jesse Sansone, let me just confirm this. He is not under any charge or any investigation. Is that correct? Absolutely not. Uh, there was no charge laid here. There has been no charge laid since. There was no evidence of any offense found. And we've received no information that the police are even considering any charges. Not that I could imagine what those charges would be. But that's right. This is not a situation where I've been retained as, as defense counsel. I've been retained here to help assist Jesse in determining the best path to go forward. Now, all of the fears that we spoke about, I mean, when we talked about this on Friday, we were uh, basing it on a news report out of the Kitcher uh, near Waterloo area. But since then, as you just heard, uh, Solomon, we have our own Chris Sims has talked to Jesse Sansone. Let me play one more snippet from Chris's phone interview with the father himself. Can you please roll that, Ricky? I told her they, she still can't go into the house um, until they get a warrant. Apparently, they told her to search the house, which my wife says she doesn't understand because it, they were through they were through the house already throughout the day. Um, she said, and all my neighbors said that. Police were in and out of the house all day. So remember, this father, Jesse Sansone, he was arrested. He was strip searched. And as he told our Chris Sims, his house was literally invaded all day by the cops before they said, oh, whoopsie, we need a warrant. Can you talk about this? I know you're bound by solicitor client privilege now, Solomon. You aren't just a commentator anymore. You're a central part of the action. But tell me what you can tell me about the facts that are known about going into this man's family house with or without a warrant. Has there ever been a warrant issued? Let me start there. Yes, uh, you know, I, I've seen no evidence of a warrant. Uh, there's no evidence that a warrant was presented. And I think at this point, you know, and this is a reason why we're taking a bit of a cautious approach. We're early goings yet in that for much of the action, as it were, Jesse Sansone wasn't present, right? This was, he's, he appears to have been detained in the police station while the police are, as you put it, invading his home, conducting a search. And we need to determine, you know, by reviewing all of the available information, all the police reports generated, the officer's notes here, what were the basis for the various searches? It certainly sounds like there were multiple searches. What were the legal justifications for them? And if his constitutional rights were breached, how were they breached and by whom? Now, that's a great question. I mean, we do allow police to do things, for example, in hot pursuit. We don't wait for the courts to get involved, but there was no hot pursuit, just to use that example. Um, Give me, I mean, again, and I'm not asking you to prejudice uh, yourself in terms of stating facts you don't know, but just speaking in an abstract case, uh, another hypothetical, Solomon, what would the police need before going into a family home? What evidence, what, uh, can the, give me an example of police going into a home without a warrant, what would they need, or how would they normally do it to get a warrant? 
Right. I mean, the starting point for searches of private residents in Canada is simple. The police cannot conduct such a search without a warrant. That's the general rule. In order to obtain a warrant, they need to satisfy a judge or a justice of the peace that there are reasonable and probable grounds to believe that the search will yield evidence of an offense. That's and as the far as you rule. know, such an application before a judge was not held. Is that, is that That's correct? Right. Now, I want to ask you, you mentioned police notes, internal memos, maybe emails. Can, have you made requests for that disclosure uh, already, and uh, um, uh, what must they disclose to you without litigation pending? Uh, do they have to give you anything? And if you sued them, what would you be able to get in terms of documentation then? Well, that's a good question. I mean, in, in the ordinary criminal sense, when there's a criminal proceedings brought against an individual, that person is entitled to receive full disclosure. Every note, every police report related to the investigation. On the other end, on a civil side, there's civil discovery. An individual will be entitled to all of the evidence in the hands of the other party. At, at this stage, however, an individual is also entitled, without any litigation, criminal or civil, to information in the hands of a government entity that concerns them. That's a, that's a simple Privacy Act requirement. And people make those type of requests all the time. We are in the pre process right now of making an informal request in an effort to determine with the material that's available at this time what exactly went on from every stage of the process, from what appears to be an arbitrary detention and arrest to a strip search at the police station and then to numerous warrantless searches of the home. Now tell but me also, you represent Jesse Sanson, the father. Do you also represent the mother in this case because I understand she was at home when the cops mar were marauding about. Do you, have you made uh, the inquiries on her behalf as well? Absolutely. You know, we are certainly uh, you know, working. This is, this is something that didn't happen in the abstract. It affected all the members of the family. Uh, the family, the privacy interest in the family home belongs equally to Jesse as it does to his spouse. And both of them are at, at present evaluating their legal options. But in order to make an informed decision, we need to know what exactly went on here. What was the thinking process? How did this matter get escalated? Who made the decisions to proceed in this manner? Last question for you because we're out of time. And by the way, I want you to stay in constant contact with me on this, Solomon. This isn't just about Jesse. This is about all of us. This is about police getting out of control. This is about property rights. This is about a man's home being his castle. You've got to keep us posted on this, Solomon. But I have one last question. The crayon drawing that started this whole thing. I've got a, you know, a, a four-year-old as well. I mean, a four-year-old drawing a, a gun, and the, the police later said that gun looked like a gun used in in uh, pharmacy holdups. What can you tell me about that? Was the do have you seen the drawing of the daughter? Does it exist? Was it thrown out? Is it pink with princesses on it? When the police says it looked like something used in pharmacy robberies, is that as ridiculous as it sounds to me? You know, that's a great question. Um, like everybody else here, including Jesse himself, I have not seen that drawing. It'll be very curious to determine what exactly happened to it. Is it in police custody? These are questions that remain to be answered. Solomon, I am so angry about what happened to Jesse, but I am equally pleased that a man of your passion and knowledge is the equalizer. You are the new sheriff in town, and you keep us in touch, okay? Thank you very much, Ezra.